Hey, what's up guys, Huey here. In this bonus module, we're gonna be talking about how to break through those fast triplet roll barriers. Uh, this is gonna be a response for one of our members, Nick. Nick is working on breaking through that 160 BPM uh, marker for his fast triplet rolls. So after Nick submitted his video, I'm gonna be going through five strategies on how to break through as you work on uh, building your roll chops. Five strategies coming at you right now. So the first thing I wanna mention in Nick's video is Nick, great job in the interpretation and the flow, the heights uh, of your triple roll exercise. I do notice that as the tempos get faster, and this is very common, the left hand starts to get a little bit lower and the interpretation of that left hand double is a little bit more open or a little bit more slurred than the right hand. So those are two very common things because you know most of us are right-handed. Uh, the left hand is gonna be a little bit weaker and um, you know, less developed than the right hand. So I'm gonna give you strategy number one is to practice off the left hand. So let's take this exercise that, that you were playing. Let's turn the metronome on here at the 140 mark, right? Um, th in this exercise, the first part of the exercise is this. So you're gonna take that whole exercise, but you're just gonna start with the left hand. And it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna make that left hand feel like the dominant hand. You're gonna hear it as the dominant hand. And then just by playing off the left, when you go back to playing off the right, there's a better chance that it'll match your right hand. So let's try this exercise off the left hand a couple times. Two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so you can make that right hand just as even as the left hand. And then when you get that left roll, that long left hand roll is gonna be a little bit more even. Strategy number two, and Nick, you mentioned this in your video, is you use buzz rolls as you're playing this exercise, right? That's a great idea, and I think in your comment you mentioned that you use the buzz rolls to help you relax, you know, it's a little bit in between the reps. Another way you can actually use buzz rolls is to help you build the chops that you want to be able to play at those faster tempos, right? So we're at 140 right now, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna push into the pad a little firmer uh, then say like an open, smooth concert buzz roll, right? By pushing a little firm into the pad, you're, you're, you're forcing your hands, especially in that front fulcrum area, to develop that strength to hold onto the stick. And you're also building those arm chops back here to get that roll. So uh, we're gonna play that same exercise, but by with buzzes. So it would look something like this. Two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. And then when you put it back in context with the roll, it'll feel a little bit uh, easier. Two, three, four. See, like even then after doing the buzz roll variation, I felt like I had to hold back a little bit during the double stroke roll portion uh, because it feels easier. On this same note, since you're not using the buzz rolls as the relaxer portion, this is something that you wanna do in your practice as you're bumping up the tempo and great uh, tempo increments that you're using, by the way, as you're going up in four beat or eight beat increments, um, what you wanna do is be very generous with playing a few reps of eight on a hand or 16 on a hand in between the reps to help your hands relax. And a lot of times I'll do double strokes, um, alternating strokes or double stops just for brevity's sake to move things along. I'm practicing by myself. This takes us to tip number three, which is to maintain the flow of the check through the roll pattern. You'll notice in the video that and this is also very common. As you get to the long roll, especially as the tempos get faster, you're going to want to slow down during the long roll, right? So your goal here is you're trying to replicate that feeling of flow that you have during the check as you play the role. Now I noticed in your video also, Nick, that in our effort to 
play with a great sound quality, which you do. It looks like you're playing a little bit firm. I mean, it looks great at the earlier tempos, which I think was 120, but as you get faster, you're not gonna play with that same level of, of uh, you know, firmness behind every stroke. If anything, it's okay to just open up and relax a little bit. In this instance, it's more about maintaining that flow and relaxation as you get in faster tempos. So I'm not gonna play with the same kind of at the faster tempos that I might at a slower, higher dynamic. That's gonna have a little bit more beef behind it, right? So as we get faster, let's take this up into like the 148 range, for example, right? So we're gonna go past what your video showed, which is 140 into 148. And in this range, we're gonna think about trying to keep the hand that's flowing I wanna keep that same level of relaxation and flow that I have in the check once I start playing the long roll. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So right there, as I'm gaining the long roll, I want that roll to feel just as easy and relaxed as the check. One, two, three, four. So oftentimes you'll see people who are trying to get to that long roll on the go. Which you're not doing in the video at all. Uh, if anything, what I feel like is during the, the check, you're a little bit on the firmer side. Which is great for, for sound quality purposes. The key or the... Um, the visual cue that you're looking for is you want the motion of that stick to be really smooth. You can notice that this stroke is very legato and there's no freezing of the stick, say like here. But as soon as I start downstroking, you'll see the stick freeze for just a moment down here. You can go to where you have like really strong sound quality and then you just back it off until you see the stick motion become smooth. So it would look like this. This is a little too much. And as I open up and I back it off, It still sounds full, but the stick motion is very smooth. One, two, three, four. I think uh, this will fall in this uh, section or this tip as well, which is it's okay to use a little bit of arm as well. As you get faster, you're gonna be using more and more arm. It's not gonna be that same pure wrist stroke that, that we use maybe at the slower tempos. So don't be afraid to incorporate a little bit of arm. That's like a sub three tip. Tip number four, um, this is like a mental thing as much as it is like a, a, a hearing thing. So as you're playing this, I know early on when I started playing uh, as a younger player, I would feel like I, was, I had the chirp on every beat. And this is what you will see most groups or people practicing is that that beep is chirping, right? And I saw this in a Benny Greb video once where he talked about how when you have that trip on every single beat, it's almost like you're asking for permission of where every beat is. And by separating out, and in his video, he actually puts the trip on like the, the and or the eighth note, the upbeats of the eighth note. He even puts it on the E and the uh. Um, but by spacing it out, and this is like a variation on that concept, is by putting it every four, you know, we just have a checkpoint that we're fixing into. And strategy number four is to feel like you're driving the metronome as opposed to the metronome is driving you. So in this instance, if we put this beat on, and I'm putting this on beat three, so it feels like a back beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now I feel like I'm the person that's in charge of the time. I'm playing as if I'm the center snare, I'm driving the tempo and the metronome is somebody that's standing next to me that you know I'm pushing them to stay in time. So I'm not relying on the metronome to push me. If anything, I feel like I'm pushing the metronome. Of course, your goal is to still stay together and then have them check you. But feel like you're driving the tempo as opposed to the metronome is driving you. Strategy number five is gonna be uh, the least uh, comfortable and the least easy to execute on. But strategy number five is you're going to have to feel some fatigue as you're building out the chops and building beyond your uh, 
your threshold for how fast or loud or you know anything that's beyond your playing threshold, you're gonna have to feel some fatigue as you're building towards this, okay? So um, when you make your next video, Nick, what I encourage you to do is to show us what it looks like when you when you blow beyond 140. So in your video, 140, even if it felt like you were starting to, to hit your, your threshold, it still looked pretty relaxed for you, right? And I'm saying that when you're practicing, you're gonna have to have days where you're pushing intentionally into the territory where it just looks not pretty, right? So for example, if you get to 160, right, and it looks like, right, that's part of the deal. So in your next video, show us what it looks like when you go 144, 148, 152, 56, 160, and maybe even 164. So in this fatigue portion, whatever your target tempo is, you're gonna have to practice beyond that target tempo so that when you come back to your target tempo, that tempo feels easy. What's a good example of this? If in your show music, you have a roll passage that is 160, you have to practice beyond 160 so that when you get to that show part, 160 feels like a walk in the park. I'll give you an example of this. In 2003, when I was marching Cavaliers, there was a portion of the Spin Cycle show. When we first turn around, it starts with triplet rolls. It's like. Something like that. I haven't played that lick in many, many years. That section is at 180. And it wasn't until 2003 that I figured out I could not play triple rolls at 180. If you want to be able to play at 180, you have to do what I did, which is I practiced slowly ramping it up from what I was comfortable at, let's say 160, 64. As I get faster, I'm trying to maintain that ease of relaxation that I have with the slower tempos, even though I'm getting into the faster tempos. Once I got to 180, I didn't stop. I would keep going into 184, 188. And by the time you get to 192, when you back it back down, 180 feels easy to you. Try it out, let us know what you come up with, send us another video, and uh, do our best to get you some more feedback and strategies of how you practice it. Okay, hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.